Hi, Matt. Uh, thank you for that intro. I appreciate it. And I thank you for the opportunity to do this webinar. Hello, everyone out there. I'm glad you all could make it. Um, it looks like a pretty good turnout. And I would imagine that uh, there are many of you that are already using Camera Match. And, and I think there's a good number of you that are interested to see what it can do. Um, and I think you'll all get something out of this webinar. I think it has something to offer for all of you um, to make the process easier and to understand it. So first I'd like to just go over very quickly uh, what Camera Match is and how it works. Camera Match is a set of VectorWorks plugins designed for matching and overlaying a perspective view of a model to a photograph of the site. Um, it also comes with a bunch of tools uh, to help blend the photo with the model and those tools include masking, cloning, and shadows. Um, so just to give you a quick idea of what's going on, um, we have here an existing photo of the site and now we have here a camera match object containing that photo and in the camera match object we see some controls. Um, there are three pairs of these control lines and um, each pair points towards a different vanishing point. Um, so here we have the two red control lines. They're drawn along horizontals in the photograph um, and these horizontals point towards uh, the right vanishing point. Uh, the two green lines are drawn along horizontals that point towards the left vanishing point. And then the two blue lines are pointing towards the vertical vanishing point, um, which in uh, which could be up or down with the vertical ones. So in this case, they're pointing very far above the photo. Um, then there's a uh, target control, and that's just to point to a location to place the model within the photograph. And a dimension is given to one of the control lines and that gives the photo some scale. Okay, so once those control lines are set up, you can set and tune and render the view and you could get something like this. Um, now you'll see some of the elements in the photo are obscured by the rendering, uh, by the model. So uh, Camera Match gives you some masking tools to bring uh, these power lines and this telephone pole forward like that as you can see now. Um, also in this image um, the user had some trees in the model um, and they're not casting shadows on the ground because the ground is the photograph. So I'm going to go to the new photo and this one shows uh, some shadow objects that were added and that just helps blend that in again uh, with the photo. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Uh, over to uh, taking photos. Okay, uh, first, it's best not to use any special lenses um, like those expensive ones that architects like to use. I don't know what they're called, um, but uh, they straighten the verticals out um, and what they're doing is they're distorting that perspective um, in a way that's not realistic so while it might look good uh, Vectorworks can't reproduce it and nor can uh, Camera Match calculate it um, and the reason why is it's creating these parallel verticals where Camera Match needs to find that vertical vanishing point so it needs these uh, two lines to converge um, or all the verticals to converge towards a, uh, a common vanishing point. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, okay. Um, the point of view is also critical um, and it, camera match is pretty good with different views uh, but if you have one that's pretty much dead on that's kind of like a one point perspective uh, it can get difficult and again it's very similar to uh, to here where we had two parallel verticals um, when you get to this type of a view it's not so much this point that 
that uh, is affecting it. It's really the other lines. See these two uh, red lines, which represent the right, uh, or they point towards the right vanishing point. Um, they get so close to parallel that they're all, almost off to infinity, which means just one pixel up or down could make a huge difference in the distance of that vanishing point, um, or even reverse it to point to the left. Um, so that's really the, the, uh, the reason. So when you're taking photos, uh, try to keep in mind uh, what elements in, in the, uh, in the uh, site that you can use to place uh, these lines. And uh, uh, just quickly here, these lines are representing lines that Camera Match uses to, uh, to find the view. So uh, Camera Match has uh, six control lines um, and they're paired up, so we have three pairs. The blue ones will converge towards the vertical vanishing point. The red ones converge to the right and the green to the left. Um, so this view here is very difficult. And, um, but just moving it slightly, if I moved it so this uh, vanishing point was just a little to the left, then we would have just enough convergence uh, to, uh, to get that view. So you wouldn't need a lot, just a little bit. Um, okay, here's an exterior shot, same kind of view. Um, and when I mean close to the photo center, I really mean uh, uh, that the, uh, this left vanishing point is close to a vertical uh, drawn down through the center. So, so it, it's uh, in this horizontal fashion, it's pretty close to the center. Um, if we took the photo, we just, just turned a little bit more so this vanishing point slid over one way or another, then these horizontals would, would uh, you know, just be enough to make it work. Um, okay. So here's some examples that actually did work. Um, now the one on the right actually was uh, difficult, a little difficult. Um, and it was really, um, it's very similar to one point, but it's, it, was, it was actually off enough to make it work. But it was difficult because of finding elements to, to, uh, to point towards that vanishing point. So uh, in this case here, uh, let me see if we can blow this up a little bit. So what we use in this case um, is this eave here, uh, just this short piece of eave, and then uh, actually used a neighboring building uh, that happened to be parallel. So we could use these two lines to, uh, to get that um, located. And then we have the verticals and then the, uh, the, the red lines pointing towards the right. And they just happen to be enough to where it still worked fine. Um, and there are ways to make things work uh, for you, um, like I'll try to show you at the end here. Okay, so let's go back. Um, so when you take pictures of the site, uh, being the digital film is as cheap as it is, take a lot of photos. Take them from just slightly different angles, from views that you really would like to use just get a little bit of variation in there. So if one is not working for you, then you have another one to fall back on. Um, okay, so here, um, this is just showing you uh, what what we had gotten out of these. So in, in, the, in this case here, this cafeteria, we had, uh, the user had put in a ceiling um, and that's the final uh, rendered view he did. And then to the right here, this is just showing you just a wireframe view of his design. This was not a complete file um, that I had. So, um, okay. Um, also with taking photos, this is something you may not think about when you're on the site. If you're used to only worrying about um, taking pictures of the existing conditions. Um, and that is, is you have to leave enough room for the new part. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that because uh, many of us are out there just trying to get the whole building in or just certain parts of it. I'm not really thinking about where that new part's going to be. So if you're going to use it for camera match, you got to make sure you have room for that model to fit. Now, once we have those photos taken, you got to worry about uh, lens distortion. 
Um, now, if it's not severe, you, you could get by without it. Um, I've always tried to correct the lens distortion. Um, and in this example here, you can see, uh, like up here at the ceiling, uh, I've exaggerated it just slightly. But these uh, here are the lines in the floor and in the ceiling, they have an arc to them. So uh, depending on where you place a control line um, in camera match, you know, if you drew a line here and you drew a line over here, I hope you can see where I'm pointing in this area here and down here, then the vanishing point will be somewhere way off to the right. If you did them near the center, they would wind up being close to parallel. And if you did them over here, they would be pointing to the left. So there's really no sure thing when you're placing the control lines. You, you're just not sure where it's really going to be. Um, and again, with the verticals, this has uh, a bit of an arc to it as well. So um, in the user guide, I mentioned some uh, uh, low-cost uh, applications. Uh, I think there's anywhere from $15 to $30. Well worth it. Um, and they're automatic, um, at least the, the one on the Mac I use called LensFix. You open the image up and you'll actually see it automatically uh, correct itself. Um, and it does that by using the camera's information embedded in the file. So it actually knows the, the lens and camera that took the image. And it has, it, it's got a huge database so it knows just about every combination out there. Um, so it just fixes it for you and you just save it out. So it's a pretty much a one step process. Okay, so once we're done that, we move over to Vectorworks. Um, in this project, I wanted to uh, to take uh, let's see, to take some old warehouse and repurpose it for something a little more useful. So, so here's that warehouse. Um, apparently, it seems to be fairly popular. I don't know why it's it's in bad shape, but um, we thought, well, maybe if we can fix it up. Um, and uh, you know, use it for some retail space, maybe. So let's see what happens. Okay, so this is a photo um, I couldn't get out to the location, unfortunately. So I, I just dug this up online. Um, so uh, it seemed like a pretty good photo, and it seemed like it wasn't really edited or distorted. So I pretty much used this one as is. Um, okay, so. Let's go over to, I'm going to find my camera match file, and where is it here? Okay, here. All right, so I didn't want to model all that, um, so, and really didn't need to model all that. But I wanted some dimensions. That's all I really needed was some dimensions of any element that I could use just for alignment purposes because I'm not going to show any of this model in my rendering because it's all existing. Um, so, uh, but instead of trying to research and figure all that out, well, I found this model uh, on, I think, 3D Warehouse. And it's a SketchUp model. I imported it. I simplified it. I really could have just deleted all these columns, but I simplified them. They were symbols. Um, so they were easy enough. Um, but realistically, I could have just deleted them. And, uh, and gone from there. Um, I'd like to try to keep the, the model as simple as possible uh, for the existing uh, to, to align to, to the photo. Um, and that's just for reasons of speed. When you're tuning uh, the view, you don't want to have to wait uh, for the, the render to update every time. So, so here's my model. I just put this in a design layer. Um, in, in uh, Vectorworks, and then I've got a couple layers for some new stuff. So, okay, let's see what else am I supposed to talk about? Oh, inserting a reference object. So let's go ahead and insert uh, this. Now, uh, reference object. Actually, I'm going to go in and uh, choose to place one, and it's going to ask me to name it. I'm just going to keep the default. And I'm going to put it here on this corner. I need some snaps on for that. Okay, I'm going to snap it to there and rotate it to there. Okay, 
So this is actually going to pinpoint a, a point on the model that I can also locate on the photograph. And that'll uh, tell Camera Match where to position the model. And it also, um, you'll, you saw me rotate it onto here, it also defines the rotation of the model and even the angle of this corner um, and, f and the height, um, so that's part of the location. So the height is critical. I'm going to put it right at the top of that. Um, and I can go to plan view, you see it that way. Um, now if you had a corner that wasn't 90 degrees, you can move this um, to whatever that angle happens to be and that will still become your right uh, vanishing point in that case. I'm going to undo that and that's all we need to do for the reference object. Let's move up to a sheet layer and this sheet layer has nothing but a viewport uh, with that one uh, existing layer on it. Okay and it's not really set in, it's in a plan view, I guess, a top plan view. Okay, so what we need to do now is to insert a camera match object. And uh, this object really drives the whole camera match process. Um, so I'm going to go in, oh, I just double clicked on the uh, viewport to bring me into the annotations. So I'm hoping I'm not doing a lot of these shortcuts leaving people wondering. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place a camera match object and it wants me to choose a photo image. Since there's none in the document I'm, I have to go in and import one. And There it is there. And I'll keep it a JPEG. And here's photo brightness. Uh, if I keep it zero it'll keep the photo at its original brightness. Um, and this is only for displaying the photo in the camera match object and um, adjusting the brightness can help you see the control lines better. So I generally have it a little bit lighter or darker. You can enter a negative to get darker. Okay, here is the reference object that I'm choosing. Um, there's only one in the file, the one I just placed. So I can select it there and that's pretty much it. I'm going to click OK and there's our camera match object. Okay, so um, I'm going to briefly go through this. Um, so here's the settings and that's where we were. Um, so you don't need to see that again. Here we see the uh, in the object info palette the dimensions, the pixel dimensions of the photo. So we have the actual dimensions uh, there and then we have the photo printed width and height and this is the size that it'll print out on, uh, the size that it appears on the sheet layer. Uh, I'm going to go in and type eight and a half and it'll adjust the width for me. So I did eight and a half high. Uh, and below that you will see suggested sheet layer DPI um, and I have now 160. Um, what that's doing is it's looking at the pixel dimensions and the size and it calculates what the DPI is of this image with those settings. And so what it's saying, it's saying, hey, well, since this photo is displaying at that DPI, let's set your sheet layer at that DPI. So if I exit this viewport and I go to my sheet layer settings, I can go in and set the DPI right there. So I have it set at 160. Okay, double click get back into the annotations and select my camera match object. Um, now I've got a few settings in here. Uh, show photo, I can turn it on and off. You want it off for the render. Uh, and Clip to viewport crop. I'm not going to explain all these too much. Uh, show control lines, pretty obvious. Just turns off the controls. Um, uh, this turns on and off the reference, uh, the 3D part of the reference object which we don't see right now because the view is not set um, and then show preview object okay um, you've probably already noticed this bizarre looking object sitting in here red and green grid uh, that's called the preview object and um, 
what that does is it's it's uh, showing you this kind of uh, a preview of the perspective view that you're setting up, um, and it's it's anchored to this uh, target point, um, and this target point just so happens to be where you're going to pinpoint uh, the reference object that's in the model uh, onto the photograph. So I can move that to the same location. Um, actually, let me turn off my snaps. Whenever you're moving any controls on the uh, camera match object, it's best to get those snaps out of your way because you really you're only concerned with the image, which you can't really snap to. <laughs> so, um, so here I'm going to put it right there because in the model that's where my reference object is located, um, and you can actually see in this preview object. It, it actually shows you these kind of uh, a red, a blue, and green axes, just like the reference object has. So it's trying to tell you, hey, that's where that uh, object is going to be anchored. Um, okay, so um, if I click on here, the preview object settings button, I have some settings in here. And uh, the default is just a simple kind of queue where it def it keeps uh, equal dimensions for uh, each side and height for these planes. Um, but I think what would be useful is to set these to the size of an element in the photograph. Now you could just go with this and it'll still be a, a nice help because it, you'll see these planes moving as you adjust control lines and you'll, you'll see how close you're getting to a, a realistic view or if things look off. Um, so before I set these, I'm going to cancel and I have to figure out what size to make that preview object. Um, I have a dimension here 22.7 uh, for that dimension and this dimension here is about 96 feet and Let's see, I'm also going to use the dimension from the bottom of the column to the capital, which is about 32 foot 5. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to my sheet layer, double click to get in my viewport annotations, and select my camera match object. Okay, click on the preview object settings, and let's turn off the uh, that constrain so we can set these three dimensions independently. I'm going to go ahead and enter the 22 or 222 foot 7 by 96 feet by 32 foot 5. And the grid spacing we're going to make um, uh, 5 feet. Okay, that looks like the right proportions. So let's go ahead and click OK. Okay, so now it grew quite a bit in size because nothing else is set up in here. Um, so let's start positioning these control lines. We sh we've seen these colored lines in the uh, photos that I have had drawn, and now we see these same uh, three pairs here. So let's go ahead and start locating these. And I'm just going to try to get them just in a rough position first. And, uh, and then I can zoom in and find adjust them at that point. And uh, actually what I'm going to do before I get too far is I'm going to set one of these uh, control lines as my measured line. I'm zooming in here because I want to try to get this one fairly accurate. And um, this measured line, it's going to tell camera match the uh, the dimension of the element that's in the photo that I've drawn this on. So I want to draw this one the complete length of that. So now that I have this drawn there, I'm going to choose on the object info palette R1 as the measured line and I'm going to give it the same dimension that was in the model of 96 feet. Okay, see so now you'll notice that red plane is already it's already adjusted itself. It's showing you how this view is shaping up already. Um, 
and it's so so we can be a little more confident that uh, we're doing this correctly and uh, so let's keep putting these down okay the green ones need to be set up and as you move things around things might get a little bit funny looking um, when you have some awkward view situation like that <laughs> where it's kind of upside down it's just looking at those uh, vanishing point locations and making its best uh, guess at it okay so um, so actually at some points you may even want to temporarily turn off that preview object um, which you can do through this checkbox in the info palette right here turn it back on so it looks like it's coming in fairly well but I just roughly place these and actually right now it is kind of in my way I'm going to turn it off and just see how well I've placed some of these and that's actually pretty good I'll put it down a little bit um, well, that actually looks pretty good this label uh, a little large uh, a little trick to that if you want to make these a little smaller to get them out of your way, you can go into the uh, text menu, change the text size, and they bump down. Um, okay, this one's quite a bit off, so. Okay, so let's turn that preview object on. And that actually looks really good now. Um, in fact, so good that I may leave it. But uh, there's a lot of cases where it's shaping up, but it's still not quite there. And uh, so in that case, what you want to do is, um, uh, if I zoom in here, it actually looks really good here too. Uh, but what I would do is just, uh, it's good to see the overall area or preview object because sometimes it, it changes uh, parts of it that you don't expect. Um, so tuning, I'm going to exaggerate this change so you can see what happens. So we see here that just kind of jumped away. Um, it's short in this area because of the uh, location of that vertical control line. So especially when you get lines that are very close to parallel, just a very, very small uh, difference in the, uh, the location now I'm, I'm using the snap loop to help me kind of make a, adjustments here. But just a small change in it can make quite a difference in here. And uh, let's move it a little more over. That's pretty good. I'm going to leave it at that. And we're ready to set our view. Set the view. Wow, that looks already very close. Um, looking up here this gable looks good this corner looks really good over here pretty close a little bit off okay well let's adjust that fine-tune and now we have different controls here I'm gonna use the left vanishing point controls I usually try to start with these and then I go over to these um, and a lot of times the distance one I need to do because the measured line might be not quite perfectly drawn or the perspective's a little different. Um, so here I'm, I'm moving to the left, the vanishing point, uh, the left vanishing point, I'm moving further left. So you can see everything kind of move as I do that. So once I got how I like it, I just let go and I save that. Now I'm going to look at the whole picture and make sure nothing else kind of shifted around. That looks pretty good. Um, now, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the other tuning controls while I'm here. Um, and I'll just exaggerate them. Here's the vertical. See how the, the top shrinks down and expands as I move it. So you can adjust it's moving that in and out. Uh, the right also you see here I move it further away you see how everything adjusts to accommodate that and again for the left you already saw that um, we can adjust the camera tilt um, notice while I'm doing all this 
that the point where the reference object is stays pinned down at that target location right here. Um, adjust the camera tilt. Um, and then you can uh, adjust the vertical rotation here. Um, I'm going to cancel this real quick and change this to hidden line. And then you'll see this. Um, now it'll render in hidden line. This shows you a little bit more clear what's going on. So here it's slower because it has to generate these hidden line rendering. But you can see here how it's rotating that around. Um, and here it's, it's rotating vertically. So using a different combination of these will get you where you need to go pretty quickly. And then this is the distance. So this one's common for you to maybe need to zoom in a little bit or, or out a little bit. Um, in my case, it looks pretty good. So we have that alignment. We're happy with it. Um, then let's continue on. OK, so I'm going to just show you what I have. Um, over here on the model. Let's go to this view and let's look at some other uh, some other layers here and see what we did. Wow, look at that. Okay, well it's not a complete model, it's just a few things. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the existing. So that's all we modeled. It's just basically a few uh, few windows that I put in, really big windows, and some other things, just a few elements just to get an idea across to show the client. Very little modeling. Um, as you can see, that's the whole model right there. So, um, so what we need to do is go back to our viewport and turn off the existing. So we have our view, but we have the existing in the photo. So let's turn on just the new stuff and well we can update it and see what it looks like oh and there it is oh we had that set to OpenGL okay so so that's it wow um, now before we get too far um, I don't want to get into rendering and lighting too much because uh, we're definitely getting short on time so I do want to mention though uh, when you do a rendered viewport for camera match I would suggest at least use uh, well exterior one bounce typically is what I use um, you can experiment with others I think none doesn't work that well for you you need to at least have one bounce um, I don't use ambient lighting um, and I do use uh, this HDRI white uh, for my lighting it's only for the lighting, not for the background. Um, so that really provides my ambient lighting. And then I just place one light source in there. Um, now you can go through and uh, uh, change the lighting. Uh, if the ambient lighting's too much, you know, I get stronger shadows. Um, you can go through uh, the resource browser. You can edit this uh, HDRI and then you can go into options and here you have a brightness setting and I've changed it to 50 because it was too bright um, so that's how I do it and I, th I think it's you know it's a quick easy way um, to get some decent lighting with a lot of uh, just little effort um, okay so back into the annotations and I have the camera match object selected um, and let's see from here I can go in and check um, I can actually set the render mode here that I want to use and I actually like to use custom render works so I'm going to choose that and render it again and we'll wait for that to do its thing um, okay so there's our render uh, looks pretty good and what we have here is well there's a lot of stuff covered up that's existing and we need it to show and um, 
I'm not going to do a, this has a lot of masking that needs to be done in this project um, so I don't want to get too involved in it but uh, let's see okay first let's start up here um, I'm in the annotations and well you'll notice the camera match object actually still shows some things here so we can turn off the control lines um, and now we have our, our rendered view. The, the photo was already turned off. What you see now is the, the rendered background of the viewport, which it uses that same photo image for. Um, OK, so um, let's get into a little masking. Here, I know there's some parts that need to be covered over. And what I'm doing is just, just a quick mask over the area that I know I have something within. That lets me see it, pulls it forward and lets me see it. And then I can go in and just create uh, you know, a, a mask in here. Um, I'm not going to try to get too perfect because we're getting short on time. OK. And then, so there's my new mask. Now let's select my temporary mask and delete it. And there you go. So that's masking that out. Um, so we can do that again over here and I'm not sure how much is there there it is, not too much um, oh actually we've got uh, that whole ledge kind of comes across something like that and then we'll delete that temporary mask and well, that doesn't look too bad. Well, there is a little bit that shouldn't be showing there, huh? Um, so, well, we can even do this. We can just draw a polygon in there and select the mask and that polygon and clip surface. And then we'll delete our temporary polygon. And now we can see our rendered model through there because it was showing sky through there. We don't want to see the sky. Um, OK. Now, we've got quite a bit here. So I'm going to just touch on how to go about it. And just mask out this whole area. I modeled this person in there as an image prop. I don't want to mask over her because she'll disappear. So I'm going to just kind of go over this area. Uh, over to here. Okay, so there's now we just see the existing part. So we want to go back. Um, in this case, what we can do, um, and when I'm working on this, I'm going to just cut some holes like I just did up here by drawing polygons and subtracting them. To make it a, a faster process, I'm going to turn off the anti aliasing. Um, and then I'll just draw some simple polygons in here. like that and then select both objects and I'm going to use the key command to subtract and there it is delete it and we'll do it again and just, these are just simple polygons um, okay we want that back column that, that we're actually putting the storefront in uh, sure hope the client likes this design Okay, so now we can see that model start to show through. So let's do a couple more quick ones here. Uh, okay, select them both, clip surface, and delete. And we have a little bit up here. I'm going to do this one too while I'm drawing polygons. Okay, actually, I think I can select all three and then clip surface. And then I'll delete those two polygons. I didn't draw them real accurate, but that's good. Um, now you'll see here uh, it's kind of a sharp edge between the mask and the model. So uh, what we need to do is give it 
some anti-aliasing. I'll give level two, and that just blurs that edge just a little bit. Okay, good. Um, we'd have to continue on this whole area and then down this side. Um, I'm going to skip that and talk about some other things here. Um, the mask object has another trick and well we don't want to show this ugly crane in here so let's try to get rid of it. Um, I just drew a mask in there. You can hardly tell it's there because it's showing the photo which is what the background is but we can turn it to clone mode and when you do you can use your selection tool and see a grip and actually move uh, you're going to displace the image within the mask and it's showing you a dashed image here um, so you can see that little that dashed image is actually being copied over to here so that's what we have there it's not the best uh, size here um, but that's basically it so and if you want it to blend in a little usually you want it a, a little bit higher anti-aliasing to try to blend it in and um, so let's do a little larger area here and again I'm not spending too much time being accurate because we're losing time okay there's another mask object go to the info palette click clone mode and let's just move that around Give it something that sort of blends in, um, and then give it a bunch of soften that edge up a little with the anti-aliasing. It's not too bad. So you know we could go ahead and, and just keep going down this whole side here, and uh, and do the same thing. Kind of want to do it. Uh, a lot of times you might want to do it kind of in pieces like this, not all at once. So you can try to get things to look more blended in with each other um, so I'm just gonna leave that you get the idea so um, that's really not very good is it so uh, we even have the scaffolding here and this beam here um, so let me just show quick you could even even do this area here um, this might be too much you might have to do it in pieces but for this demo I'm gonna I'll just do it here oh no move it up here a little bit something like that so probably need to piece it together a little bit more than than what I've done but actually it's not not too shabby blend it in a little and now you've gotten rid of that um, the same could be done here so continue on and uh, let's see another thing we have we want to add a shadow because the photograph is not shaded by the model but the model does have it so in that case we want to add another shadow um, and there's a couple ways to do that in this case um, I'm just going to go quickly and just to give you an idea of what it can do so here's a shadow um, and that's basically just to bring that part down a little bit uh, to blend it in so now it looks like it's back under there and we can set this a little more opaque say 70 instead of 50 and you can see it darken maybe 60 um, you can even set it to use a different color so if the shadows in the photo have a certain kind of bluish hue or something like that you can adjust it to, to better blend in um, so and again we would do the same thing for here and again we could set that to a different darkness or opacity and there we go okay so once we're all done um, I'm going to open up a uh, finished version of it. This is what we'd have. Um, double click 
get into the annotations and you'll see here I've got one large mask here um, I've got uh, actually one very big mask that covers a lot of the building it's just got a lot of clippings out of it and it to display uh, the pieces of the model behind so this is a, a much more elaborate than typical masking job and um, also remember you don't need to uh, to do let me bring the uh, the other file up real quick you don't have to make it one single mask uh, they can overlap one another and they'll blend in perfectly so here let's say I wanted to add a little more mask over in this area you'll see here that it perfectly blends in so uh, there's no problem in having many masks overlapping each other in fact you can select them both and you can add surface and uh, and then it'll connect them as well okay so here's our final render and all we need to do is export it out and um, so really exporting out I'm not going to get in too much but uh, uh, generally when I export out um, if I want to keep it a higher quality I often use PNG it's a lossless format and the file size is usually pretty good um, if I need it smaller to send to someone I'll go to JPEG and uh, try to set it at a pretty decent quality um, but more importantly what I typically do is I, I actually send it out at the same resolution that we set for the sheet layer which was 160 and um, and that will keep the um, uh, the mask objects all the any aliasing that's going on is actually basing itself on that setting in the sheet layer so uh, uh, when you export it out you'll have the nicest look so I try to keep all this the same and uh, in an image editor you can always change that but you can experiment with different settings it's not in stone it's just suggestions okay so that's that um, unfortunately I'm a little short on time I'm gonna see if I can very quickly show you my solution to a tricky problem okay this problem was with this file here and you'll see here this was these verticals I'm gonna bring the camera match object forward um, okay I'm in a viewport with a, a view that was set and these verticals are almost perfectly parallel so when the view is set we get this really flattened out this thing is supposed to be curving around like the image shows but it's just kind of stretched way out so uh, if you look at the preview object it's also very bizarrely shaped so that's that's the nice thing about the preview object is it shows you that um, and it, it gives you a hint of whether this is right or not so I'm gonna bring the camera match object forward and I have this set to 10 foot 8 which is what our measured line is and it's just showing as a cube um, so here since these are so far to parallel so close to parallel um, what seems to fix this the best is to just slightly move them inward just a little bit I'm gonna go over here and do the same and, and as you do it watch the preview object until it seems to line up See, I only move them just a few pixels each while I, when I was zoomed in and it's getting pretty close maybe a little bit more uh, maybe a little bit more on this side and basically I'm trying to do it even on both sides just so the location in the horizontal is, is similar and now it looks like it's very close so I'm gonna go ahead and set the view to match and you'll see here it's already snapped in so um, now this is probably more for experienced users I've gone over it very quickly but I just wanted to show you that there there are solutions in tricky situations where you just bring that uh, these lines a little less parallel can get you somewhere and then the, the tuning can actually help uh, you know bring it to where you really need it so even in the awkward situations usually you can find a way to get that view okay well um, that's it I've kind of gone over my time I hope I didn't uh, drag anything on too long or cover 
anything too fast. Um, so um, I'll hand it back to Matt. Um, I'm not sure where we go from here. <laughs>